Coffee and cocktails is a classic combination. We mostly see this through using things like a coffee liqueur. But every morning, I make myself a pour-over coffee with hot water, and I was wondering what would happen if we just ran a cocktail through that coffee instead. Could we get that same rich coffee flavor in some of my favorite drinks, or would it become too bitter or not work because we're not heating the cocktail? Who knows? So I spent the last week running some experiments, and spoiler alert, the results are awesome. So for this method, I highly recommend fresh grinding whole beans here using a burr grinder like this. This Encore is a fantastic entry-level burr grinder, and for this one, I'm using a setting of 12. I found that 15 grams of coffee beans was ideal here, but it's a bit forgiving. Do a heaping spoonful. With a burr grinder, we're going to get a nice, even grind of our coffee beans. And for all my fellow coffee addicts, that sound of grinding coffee triggers some happy Pavlovian response, I think. All right, now that we have our fresh coffee grounds, let's go ahead and put them into our pour-over dripper. I'm using a pretty standard V60 dripper here with a size 2 filter. And just as if you're making coffee, you're going to want to run some water over this filter first to wash out any of that paper flavor. I'm just doing it over a bowl here to catch any of that water coming out the bottom, and then go ahead and dump in all of your coffee grounds over the top. The consistency of your coffee should be medium fine like this, a little more coarse than espresso grind. All right, we got our coffee locked and loaded. What cocktail are we gonna run through this? Today I'm gonna choose three stirred cocktails that I think will work really well, but I would love to see what you guys come up with. Now, I gotta try the classic Manhattan in this one. I think the sweet vermouth is gonna play really nicely off the bitterness of the coffee. So we're gonna start with one ounce or 30 mils of Carpano Antica sweet vermouth into a mixing glass. Next, we need some rye whiskey, which I think is gonna stand up really nicely to the coffee. Two ounces or 60 mils into the glass. Then we're gonna hit this with a couple dashes of Angostura bitters. Because I'm feeling fancy today, we're also gonna hit that with a couple dashes of black walnut bitters. I think a little nuttiness is going to really pair well with that coffee. And then we're going to just stir this with ice for about 15 seconds to chill and dilute it. Now you might think that you'd have to heat this cocktail to actually get some of that coffee extraction from the grounds, but the ethanol in the cocktail is actually going to do some of that work for us. And what I love about this method is we're just going to filter this right into the glass. So here we're grabbing a chilled coupe glass, and then we're just going to slowly pour the cocktail over the top of the coffee grounds. Now you're not gonna get that bloom effect that you would with hot water, but you're still gonna get a really nice extraction here. So just do this really slowly. No need to rush the pouring process because it's just gonna come out drip by drip at the bottom of the filter anyway. What we're basically doing here is a really light infusion. In fact, you wouldn't want to extract as much coffee flavor here as you would get from a normal hot cup of coffee. That would just completely overpower the drink. Here we're really just going for a subtle coffee note within the cocktail. The whole filtering process should take about two or three minutes, and once that's done, just lift up the coffee dripper. And then we'll just finish this with a maraschino cherry, and let's give this a taste. Our pour-over coffee Manhattan. And wow, this is excellent. There is a real coffee flavor there, but it doesn't overpower the drink. The bitterness is nicely offset by the sweet vermouth. No long infusions needed or unnecessary sweetness from coffee liqueur. This is awesome. And before we move on to the next cocktail, I want to make sure you're using great coffee. And for this video, I am thrilled to be partnered again with Trade Coffee. I'm pretty particular about my coffee, and Trade makes it super easy to find coffee that matches my preference and conveniently delivers it right to my door. You just start by taking this short quiz to tell them what you like. In this case, I was going for coffee ideal for pour over, served black, maybe a light roast to minimize the oils and retain the origin flavors, and whole beans so we can do that fresh grind. Then you just choose your delivery frequency and it arrives fresh roasted to your door. And here I was matched with a delicious blend that had hints of dark chocolate paired super well with these cocktails. So whether you're a daily coffee drinker like I am or interested in trying out some of these pour over coffee cocktails, I can't recommend Trade Coffee enough. And right now they have a great offer. You can just click the link below to get 30% off your first bag when you sign up. And that also includes free shipping. Go give it a try. Okay, so what's next? My mind immediately went to another one of my favorite classic cocktails, the Negroni. 
but I felt like the variant that swaps whiskey for gin, called the Boulevardier, would be a better pairing with the coffee. So let's give it a try. We're gonna start with one ounce or 30 mils of Campari into a mixing glass. Then another one ounce or 30 mils of sweet vermouth. Again, we're gonna use Carpano Antica. And for our whiskey, we're gonna choose a nice bourbon, another one ounce or 30 mils into the glass. Before we stir with ice, we're gonna prepare a fresh filter and coffee grounds. And with this one, I'm gonna add a pinch of salt, which can temper some of the bitterness that we might get by combining coffee and our Campari. Now we're just gonna stir this with ice to chill and dilute it. Grab another chilled coupe glass, throw the filter on top, and just like with last time, we're going to slowly pour the cocktail over the top. One thing to note about this technique, you're gonna lose about 10% of the yield to the coffee grounds. So to make up for this, you can just up the amount of each ingredient in the recipe to get a normal cocktail yield. And once that's done, we're gonna garnish this with a nicely cut orange twist like this. And because I'm still feeling fancy, we're just gonna flame the oils over the top of the glass. Make sure to do it in slow motion. Twist it up, drop it in the glass, and let's try our pour over coffee Boulevardier. Okay, this one is also excellent. It's like a better version of a coffee Negroni that doesn't sacrifice anything to add that coffee flavor. And with that orange twist over the top, it all just comes together so well. All right, cocktail number three. Those who watched my pina colada video will remember I did a version that included coffee liqueur and banana liqueur. It was that cocktail that taught me that coffee and banana can actually pair really well together. So for this video, I wanted to find a stirred cocktail that used banana liqueur, and I went with a very simple drink that uses cognac as its base spirit. This one's pretty easy. We're just gonna start with one half ounce or 15 mils of our banana liqueur. Here I'm using a delicious one from Tempest Fugit Spirits. Then grab a nice cognac, and we're gonna add two ounces or 60 mils into the glass. Then we're just gonna round this out with some chocolate bitters. Hit that with about two dashes. Give that a quick stir with ice to chill and add some dilution. But this time, instead of a coupe glass, we're gonna pour this over a chilled rocks glass with a rock inside. Just about one ice cube will do. And all this caffeine is giving me the jitters, so I'll just speed this part up a little bit. Here's a nice close-up shot. Look at that beautiful clear ice cube. Throw another orange twist on top, and let's give this a taste. The pour over coffee banana cognac cocktail. All right, this is the winner. Such a delicious cocktail. What would normally be a bit on the sweet side has really been balanced out by that coffee, but all the flavors just play off each other so well, and it's all held together by a really smooth cognac. Make this as soon as possible. And thanks again to Trade Coffee for sponsoring this video. Click the link below to get 30% off your first bag.